I'm trying to hook this 4075R tractor to this plow, which is arguably too big for it, yeah. And I've run into a couple of problems that, yeah, they're not so difficult to solve, but I realized it was an opportunity for me to maybe provide a little information to you about some of the challenges you might face with a three-point hitch. That's right, three-point hitches are supposed to be the end-all, compatible with everything, blah, blah, blah. They are, until we get into the details. And that's what we're gonna do here today. Let's get started. Fundamentally, our problem here is that I've got a category two attachment and a category one tractor. I saw online there's a bunch of articles and videos about the differences between the different categories of three-point hitch. And they go through all the technical details of the differences. I, I don't really want to go into that since it's covered so well in other videos and articles everywhere. But what I want to focus on is some ways that we can make it work when our hitches don't match the implement we're trying to connect to. I want to look at a few choices. Well, first I want to look at the problem. You know, it's one thing to say it's category one versus category two, but what really is the problem here? Well, the problem here is that this pin, okay, the lift pin here is an inch and an eighth, and this hole is seven eighths. So I really have no way, I mean, you can tell how this is made. I don't have any way to be able to make this hole bigger. And the way this is made, I don't have any way to make this pin smaller. So I'm in a difficult situation, but oftentimes you're not in quite that difficult of a situation. So let's, let's deal with some of those examples first. Oftentimes when you look at the implement, you will see pins sticking out, right? And if you look on the backside, there's a, a nut, it's, it's bolted through there. And it may have a really big bolt if it's a category two pin, an inch and an eighth pin out here, that, that bolt on the backside may be pretty big. Well, pins are made which have the big bolt on the backside for category two, but have the pin size be seven eighths on the front for category one. So sometimes it's simple enough that you can just replace those pins with those custom ones that get you back down to category one if that's your problem. Now, if you're in the reverse situation, you got category one pins, that's an easy one to solve. Let me show you. Anytime your pin is too small, you can use what we call a bushing, right? Simple enough. This goes from a three quarter inch category one top link pin to a category two, whatever size that is, right? It's not much bigger. So you can just slide that over your pin like that and now you've got an instant category two size. And you should do that rather than just allowing the pin to slop back and forth in the lift arm or whatever situation you're in because that will wear fast. If you put this bushing in there, it won't wear nearly as fast. So, so this is an easy solution. And it's also kind of used as the second solution when you have a category two attachment, which might have some custom long pins or something. Sometimes you can replace those pins with category one pins and use the bushings on the attachment side, right? Not just where the arm hooks, but use them in the holes where the attachment goes. So you might want to run bushings everywhere except for in the lift arm, right? So, so there's a couple of ways you can do that. So analyze, analyze your attachment and your, and your problem in that, in that way. Now, when I look at this plow, it looks like this piece would all come off, and then I might be able to go to the manufacturer and find a, a separate attachment here for category one. There may very well be one. I actually talked to the manufacturer in this case, and they didn't have one handy, right? They didn't have one that they could send me in the next few days, so that option was out in this case. But a lot of times you will see that you'll see uh, either something that's detachable, or in some cases, you may actually see both sizes on your attachment. That's when you're in the easiest uh, way to, to mix and match. In my case, I'm still stuck. I don't really have any way to use bushings that I can figure out. I don't have, you know, I, I, I can't really drill out that hole. That's, that's crazy out of that ball. That's just not going to work. That's not something that I'm capable of doing. So I'm going to have to resort to something that's going to cost me some money. 
In the case of the 4R tractor, they actually make a Category 2 and Category 1 lift arm. If you look at this fancy ball here, it's actually got Category 1 here, and then you can rotate at 90 degrees, and it's Category 2. Okay, this lift arm that I purchased actually has the extendable lift arm feature, which is much nicer anyway, and is more important when you get up into the Category 2, Category 3, all the bigger implements, because you can't scoot those implements by hand. I, there's no way I'm moving this plow by pushing on it or pulling on it. So having a, a, a movable lift link like this is a big help. Now, this cost $341 and some odd cents before tax. And uh, so it's it's not cheap. And and to that end, to me, a 4075R, 75 horsepower tractor ought to include this link instead of the fixed category one link. In fact, I'll give you another concept on that. Uh, this one works with category one, right? So there's no downside to them using the link other than maybe it costs a few more dollars. Even if they offered one without the extendable link, I just don't understand why they couldn't go to something that would work category one or two. Uh, most, I would say that most tractors in the 75 to 100 horsepower range will still allow you to connect to a category one attachment because a lot of people will have a simple landscape rake that, yeah, they know the tractor's too big, but they still want to use it. So I want to show you how to replace these. I'll put the part numbers for these right here. I'll put a link in the description where you can get them with free shipping from greenpartsstore.com with code TTWT. And I'll also explain the top link. Let's get started on all this at this point. I'm gonna drive up a little bit so I can work on the grass. Okay, before I start working, I should mention the top link. It got the same issue there, right? This is too small of a hole. In the case of the plow, I maybe could have got by by using a smaller pan and the bushings in, in the plow, uh, but it's, it's going to be a problem uh, in, in most applications. The standard thing to do is to replace with the Category 2 top link. It's interesting that it's a little bit shorter, okay? But this is the Category 2 top link. Again, the part in the description. This was even more, $366. So because of the price of this, whew, yeah, having trouble catching my breath after that one. But because of the price of this, I don't really recommend it, especially since I have the fourth and fifth SCVs. I recommend this instead. I got this hydraulic top link from AgriStore USA. I actually got it for Johnny Five, but it's gonna work fine here. Um, and I'll show you a little bit how to size that. It's a little heavy here to hold both of them, so you'll convince me to talk quick. Notice that the hydraulic one, when fully retracted, is a little bit shorter than the standard top link. I actually like it that way because that means that I'll get a little more forward tip on it, and then when I want to extend it, I can extend it a lot further than, than the standard one would extend. So when I'm sizing them, I want to get the hydraulic one a little bit shorter, maybe a couple inches, maybe an inch and a half, whatever shorter than the fully retracted length on my stock top link. And then if you want, you can make sure that the extended length on this one is at least as long as the extended length when you when you stretch that one, uh, your stock one out to its, its max length. AgristoreUSA.com, use code TTWT for 5% off. These are BSPP threads. If you don't get the hose kit, they include a couple of adapters to get them to pipe thread. If you do get the hose kit, they, they fit directly in here. I'd recommend the hose kit just for that, for that reason. And um, one of the points that I like about this is this check valve. So it's not gonna leak down on its own over time. That check valve will keep this from leaking. AgristoreUSA.com, use code TTWT for 5% off. Made in Italy, not in China like most of the other ones we know. I decided I would get you right down here with me and you could see close up what's going on. This is the only piece we're gonna replace and we're gonna keep the same lift points here. Um, there's one piece right here that I'm gonna to need to take out the little cutter key. The rest of them are easy quick connect clip keys of some sort. I'm gonna stand both of these arms up beside each other 
and you can see that they are the same length. So we're good on that. I'm a little confused why the top link is shorter. Not gonna worry, because we're not gonna use it anyway. I butchered that cotter pan, so I gotta get a new one anyway. This is a good time for me to show you a feature that's available on the 3 and 4 series, not available on the 2R, and it, but it is available on older tractors. You can switch how this pin sits. If you set it like this, this gives you some vertical play in the attachment. That means if the attachment like hits a bump, you're mowing and it hits a bump, it can raise up without having to affect the three-point hitch. It also will give you some side-to-side -side movement. That could really help you with, uh, say, a rear finish mower or some sort of an attachment that needs to flex side-by-side. -side. Now, what you can do then, if you take the pin out, move it back just a little bit, you can put it sideways like this, and then you have a fixed three-point, okay? So that's just some choices you have that you don't have on the smaller tractor. Take out my little cotter key here. And wouldn't you know it, that one comes out nice as can be. Well, out with the old. the new. So the only thing painful here was the pain in my wallet, right? Um, I wish I could have chosen these even, even if they'd let me chose, uh, you know, when you when you order your tractor, if you could choose, I want to get the category one or two extendable lift arms. I looked through all the options list and you can get a category one only extendable lift arm, but the category two one's just not available. Not really sure I understand that. The reason these links are available at all is because of the 4M HD, so the 4052 and 66M HD. They include these links standard. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing. Definitely confusing to me. So the MHD, in this case, gets a higher level feature than the R series tractor, even in higher horsepower. But hey, we don't make the decisions. What I'm just trying to do is show you the options that we have to work around it. I just went through that discussion of how I'm gonna use the hydraulic top link instead of the standard one, but I guess I'm not. It's a little bit too wide here. It's easily resolved by grinding a little bit of this edge off. But given that I've got the factory one here, I'm not gonna take that effort. I don't have any need for the hydraulic top link. I was just showing you that the it's a better answer. I think it is a better answer and just a little bit of grinding of the, the lip right there on one side or the other or both would allow that to fit. Even so, we're gonna have to use a bushing right in there. Now we'll still need a bushing in this top link as well because this pin's category one here, right? I had to cut a little off of my bushing to make it fit Hope I cut enough off. My bushing is still a little bit too long, but I think I can get it shoved in here. There we go. Let's see if we can get it hooked up. We'll try out this hitch assist. I've got it backed up here just about as close as I can get. Now with, with these adjustable lift arms, I have a lot of flexibility, right? I'm gonna lower the hitch a little bit because I think the adjustable lift arms give me some upward momentum and then I'm loose back here too. So, we'll go back. The parking brake has to be set on the tractor so it's not gonna move very much, right? 
There we go. That's easy enough. Now I'm gonna do the other side and I'm just gonna reach across. That's gonna make it hard. Well, I tell you what, I'll move the camera. Okay, so in typical fashion, I don't perfectly line up, right? So I'll hold that out. I'll lift the free point a little bit. And now I'm gonna back up a little bit. And no, there's not really any risk of me running over myself because it moves so slowly. Up a little. Back a little. Look at that. Now, well, maybe a little high. I should have flexibility there. Now these are loose, I have to back on in. I've always before done that from the tractor, see? But I can do it while I'm here. Perfect. Now I need to lengthen the top link. When you do that, don't just grab this and start screwing it, right? Because that means you're going to be taking out only half of the top link at one time. So we've got to turn the whole thing. So that means hold this end. This one's really nice and smooth. I need to lube that up so that it'll be that nice and smooth next time. I'm gonna tighten that back up all I can. At some point it gets too tight because I'll be trying to lift the whole back of the plow, so I won't be able to do that. It's easy to bend these pieces here. I have no idea which direction to hook up the hoses. Okay, so this is the first real test. All the rest of the hurdles have been just hurdles. Will we be able to pick it up? Doesn't it look good, does it? That's all I've got. It's going to be kind of cumbersome to do at every end, isn't it? Not good. I'm afraid that's where we're going to have to leave it for this episode. I guess that's about as much suspense as I can leave for for one episode. That means you have to tune in next time. But I'm more determined than this. I'm not gonna give up this easily. I see a couple of things that I might be able to do. This plow's quite adjustable. I'm not sure but what I can't move these bottoms forward. If I could move all of these bottoms forward to these front holes, maybe that would shift enough weight closer to the tractor that I could lift it. Of course, you know, I'll have to lift it when it's got dirt on it too, so that's, that's a challenge. There's also another choice. I can take off the third bottom and run with only two. Now, I'll tell you a lot more about this plow, assuming I can pick it up by the time we get started in the next episode. I hope that gives you enough, uh, yeah, lure to come back next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up.